So how do you get from DNA to become a real creature? Well, let's take one of those fantastic voyages and we'll show you. We're going to find DNA and we'll make it a typical cell, so we're going to have to fly in and then go off to the nucleus of the cell, which will make a beautiful castle, the headquarters. And there's the DNA, the master code, inside the nucleus. DNA, says Greg, never leaves the nucleus. You ever meet one of those mean librarians, you know, yes. special reserve section? The ones that go, pow! Right, you can take the thing, you can copy it, but you can't take the book, because somebody else might need it. So if DNA is locked in the nucleus, how do we get the information out to build our creature? Well, that's what RNA does. That scribe, copying recipes out of the cookbook and throwing them out the window, out to the cytoplasm C that makes up most of the cell, all those recipes floating through the air, they are RNA. And to finish up, in that C, you see hundreds of thousands of, well, we've made them into little guys with chef hats. Those would be ribosomes, and in your world, there are chefs who are using the recipes that, that are written in the RNA. And whenever a recipe lands on a chef, whatever it is, he cooks it. Whatever it is, he cooks it. And each recipe is for a protein. Proteins build cells, bone cells, brain cells, all cells. So all these chefs are basically building you. You are made of proteins. And because of RNA, we can copy, we can distribute, and we can cook up you and me. And so th that video is, is basically reiterating that that DNA needs to be protected. We don't want to send that DNA out into the cytoplasm where it can be damaged by all the chemistry happening out here. It's our master recipe. It's kept in the castle. It doesn't leave the castle. But we're going to send all those recipes, the RNA, out to the cytoplasm, and the cooks are going to make it. The cooks are going to make whatever recipe we give them, and the cooks are the ribosomes. So the ribosomes are the cooks. They're going to read the recipe, and they're going to assemble that protein. I think that's a really great illustration for just the real basic part of that story. So let's look more closely at nucleic acids. This is going to be our fourth category of macromolecule. So this is the polynucleopeptide, the polymer. So remember the two terms that we use specifically for nucleic acids. You look back at that chart of monomers and polymers. Remember the monomers are called nucleotides. And the polymers are called polynucleotides. about RNA or DNA, the nucleotides are going to be different. And in fact, RNA has four different nucleotides and DNA has four different nucleotides. So RNA, DNA. RNA stands for ribonucleic acid and DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. And we'll look at the difference in structure between the two of them. RNA is a polymer consisting of four different nucleotides. And DNA is a polymer consisting of four different nucleotides. So let's compare this to a protein, a polypeptide chain. A polypeptide chain consists of 20 different amino acids. But the RNA and DNA, it's going to be a chain that consists only of four different nucleotides. Those nucleotides have the same basic structure, and that's shown on the screen here. We have a pentose sugar. Pentose meaning it's a five carbon sugar. That sugar is either ribose, if we're talking about RNA, 
or it's deoxyribose if we're talking about DNA. So that's one way that these two differ in structure, is that that pinto sugar is either ribose or deoxyribose. D means without, so you can guess what deoxy means, without oxygen. And if you look at the difference in structure between these two sugars, one of them has an OH and one just has an H. Okay, so looking at that pinto sugar, this would be ribose. And this would be deoxyribose. One less oxygen. Then both of them have a base in this location. And then a phosphate group. Phosphate functional group. This was one of the functional groups that I said was going to be very, very important in understanding DNA, RNA, and also ATP. That's a double bond to that one oxygen. Sorry, it's not drawn very clearly. So phosphate group. Pinto sugar differs between RNA and DNA. Phosphate group is the same. Those bases differ only in one. Okay, so both DNA and RNA have adenine, guanine, and cytosine, but then when we get to this last base, DNA has thymine and RNA has uracil. We typically represent those bases by just the first letter of the base. Okay, so looking at RNA, RNA has C, G, A, and U. DNA has C, G, A, and T. This is where they differ. Okay, C is cytosine, G is guanine, A is adenine, and U is uracil. Same down here, except T is thymine. So when we're looking at the structure here, for RNA, the four nucleotides differ only in this location. So for RNA, this can be C, G, A, or U in this location. And for DNA, this would be C, G, A, or T in this location. Then what happens is those nucleotides link together in any possible arrangement to produce that polynucleotide. You don't need to memorize the structure of these different bases. You do need to know that they share three, but this is where they differ. And ribose and deoxyribose are the two pinto sugars that make up that nucleotide. Okay, see, so these are the nucleotides, and then these link together to produce the polynucleotide. The other difference in structure is that RNA is just a single strand of nucleotides. But DNA is a double strand of nucleotides. One runs one direction and one runs the other direction. They're called anti-parallel. They run like this. Let's see what that looks like. So this would be a polynucleotide. This one is single-stranded, so this would be RNA. Again, this is the nucleotide blown up. These are the bases. 
Those are the pinto sugars. So this is just taking that big picture and showing you the individual parts. And this is DNA. So DNA, in this example, this backbone is going to be the phosphate groups and the sugars are all going to be shown in cartoon version is this ladder. So phosphate groups and sugars, and then the bases stick out. And the bases on one strand, hydrogen bond to the other strand. So as promised, hydrogen bonding in proteins, nucleic acids, and in water. So here we go, DNA with hydrogen bonds connecting the two. We will look in a lot more detail at DNA structure when we talk more specifically about DNA in a later unit. For now, you should know that DNA is double-stranded. They're called anti-parallel strands because they run opposite to each other. So anti-parallel strands. Squeaky marker. And RNA is just a single-stranded polynucleotide. OK, so that concludes the macromolecules. You now should know about carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. Now we're going to put that information to use in understanding the cell and how cells function.